off, I section the hair from the crown area towards the front. What I'm looking at is the cowlick. And as I create that division, it's key and it's very important that we keep that section extremely clean. This is going to help me balance out the haircut and proportion off the opposite side. I clip that out of my way and I start here with a number two and I, with the open blade. And if you notice here, as I start to work that I'm going to use more the heel of the clipper. So that's going to be more the back part of it. So I could continue to subtly build weight as I work upward. So I'm not digging into it. If you notice that blade is just a lot flatter working against the head shape, working my way all the way around to the opposite side. As I continue that, I then close the lever and then work my way counterclockwise towards the opposite side. Again, focusing just more on that back heel of the clipper. With my trimmer here, I'm going to set in my guideline. This is going to be very important. As I'm working with a lower fade, I'm going to set in first what's going to be my shortest length. I want to make sure that it's nice and clean. I keep it very low around the ear. What I'm looking at is the amount of space that I have to create the gradients for the length that I already have with a pre-existing haircut. So because I want to steadily build some weight, I'm going to keep that just a little bit lower. So that way it just fits a little bit more suitable to the head shape. And also it's going to leave me just enough room so I could leave that length that I need towards the crown area. And I work this from front to back and the same from front to back. And the reason for that is because it has just slightly a dip towards the back. So if you could say it's not a smiley face, but it does have a diagonal back. I'll move that all the way to connecting it towards the center. The bottom part I'm not focused on because later on you'll see that we're going to shave that off. So I'm not going to waste my time cutting that hair off. So here I just balance it off the center and make sure that that line is nice and clean as this will be my guide for the entire haircut. I go here now to a one and a half open blade and using that same method. But here I start a little bit of toe and then I start working more towards the heel of it. So the toe just helps me diminish a little bit of the line. And then as I work more of the heel of the clipper, it continues to build set away as I move up towards the head shape. My hand is, is also very light as I'm cutting. Once I approach the opposite side, I'm going to close that lever and I'm going to work my way again around the head shape till I end up where I started first. Here I'm using a lot more of that heel of the clipper. <clears throat> Folding that ear down, it's very important that we have control. I don't want to discomfort the guests as I'm working my way around. And here, if you see again, I approach it from front to back in the same exact manner. So even though I work my way around the head shape, I still went from front to back. I go in with the number one guard and I have an open blade. So I start off always with an open blade and then I start to close that down. So I start diminishing a little bit more of that weight line. So here I went with that open and then I started to close it down. So I'm going to start fading and blending that from the front towards the back with the open blade. And then I'm going to close that blade. And a lot of times in this area, you'll see me use a little bit more of the corners of the clipper. And that is because of the contour and the roundness of the head shape. Here I start off with my open zero. And if you notice also, I call this like a fanning motion. My hand is extremely, extremely light. So think about like if you were applying makeup, right? Your hand's going to be very, very light if you were trying to blend or fade something out. The same way if you were coloring hair, right? If you want to blend something, your hand becomes very light. So the same things with my clipper, my hand becomes extremely light as I start to blend. I grab my comb in a C-shaped manner, and this is just going to allow me to be able to build some weight. So I don't really move much of my wrist. What I use most it's just my fingers to fold that comb so I could comb it back down for control and then up to cut. <clears throat> Here I'm just using my comb as an extension of length. I'm working against the head shape, away from the head shape. So I'm not resting that. So it's in a floating comb position. And if you notice also, as I continue working my way up, my elevation is higher and higher and higher so I can soften that line. So through this bottom area, if you see it's slightly in an anchored position, but it's just because I want to slightly build some weight. So just think about the same way you would do with finger angle. I have the same approach exact with my comb angle. Now I go back with my number two just to refine some of that length and blend in what we just did with our clipper over comb. 
before I continue moving on. So I like to work it through panels. So I start off with one panel and make sure that that panel is nice and clean. It's blended all the way out. And that basically sets my guideline so I can continue to work my way all the way around the head shape. With that open blade, working a lot more with that toe of the clipper, you notice as I start to diminish that line. So I start off almost like in a fanning motion. So my elbow is a little bit higher up. The clipper is also in a position where the teeth are facing in. If you notice the bottom of the clipper is slightly lifted. And then I start shifting that slightly downward until I start to blend in that line. And what this does is with the same exact length, I create a little bit of distance. And then I work my way from the bottom up just to continue to steadily build that weight. So a lot of times when I'm blending, you know, the question is, do I start bottom to top or top to bottom? It depends. Here I start to work bottom to top because now I'm trying to build some of that weight. So first I diminish the shape and now I'm building that weight and creating that gradients up into the existing length that I created. So here with my number one, open blade, working with the corners of the clipper. But if you notice also that my clipper is going to mirror the same section angle. So that angle that I created for it as my guideline, my clipper has to mirror that also. So if that has a diagonal back, my clipper should be also mirroring that same shape. So it's a little bit tricky if you're working all the way around the head shape. you got to remind yourself that it's almost like a smiley face, right? That you're creating that circle. So you're coming with that tip down, and then it slightly moves upward, as you notice here. So again, with that open blade, and then I use a brush just to make sure that I get the hair off of the scalp. Many times the hair stays so short that it stays stuck to the scalp, and then you can't really see the grayness and the blend that you've created. I like using a glove, and a lot of times why I use a glove is just to avoid any hair splinters. So going here with uh, one, and if you notice, it's a very, very light hand, and it's a floating motion. So whenever the head shape starts to go inward, I just start working against that head shape. So it's not so much of a scooping motion, but just having a very, very light hand so you could feel the surface of the bone structure as you're working with it. I'll continue working my way towards the opposite side, folding the ear down. I'm always used to that. You know, I think a lot of times when you're working with the guests, it's one of the most important things that sometimes you might hit them over the ear and just creates a little bit of discomfort. And then from that front, if you notice, I stop right above the ear, so around the mastery process area, and then I start working front to back again. And it's because if you think about it, it's slightly like a rounded shape. So it's not only just building weight in the vertical dimension, but also in the horizontal dimension. Because of my clipper position, I slightly build set of weight towards the back because that's going to help me through that crown area just have that little bit longer length. Working around the ear again with that open blade. And if you notice, I'm working more with the toe of the clipper. And then I slightly start to float with that and use a little bit more of the heel of the clipper. I go back to a number one to refine the gradients, making sure that I brush the hair off of the scalp so I could see. And then working in that same manner from front to back, taking off that guard. And here I'm just floating. So here my hand is extremely, extremely light when I'm working. Many times it's barely even touching the scalp. So this is something that you have to get used to. Also, if you notice how I hold my clipper, it's almost like how modern day you text on a phone or how you hold a remote control with my thumb on the top. So that just gives me a little bit of more flexibility. And whatever I do on one side, I must repeat on the opposite side. So I go back with the clipper over comb. And if you see again with that C-shaped motion, how quick and simple and easy it is to comb that hair back down for control and then comb it up as you're cutting. You see that the comb there, I start cutting, bringing my clipper upward instead of just horizontally. And the reason that I do that is because I just want to get into specific smaller areas instead of when I go in horizontally, I tend to cut a lot more. Once we've done that, we start to refine that shape. I remove my clip and apply some moisture, some water towards the top so I could cut the top. With the top, I'm going to cut from side to side. So I start in that crown area. And what I'm trying to do here is just create it just a little bit flatter of a surface. I'm looking at the bone structure in itself. Uh, what he had previously was just a little bit round for it. So it would create just a little bit of too much weight towards the center. I wanted to push some of that weight out towards the corner. So basically, I'm cutting a flat layer through that top. So if you notice where you see the most amount of length coming off, through is going to be that center. So if you notice where the part is, I leave that extended upward because a lot of times I need that length to create volume as I'm going to comb the hair. 
sectioning is extremely important to me. So if you see every section that I take has to be very clean. So I'm always very, very aware of that as I'm cutting hair. You know, I always say like the movie Karate Kid, you must practice and practice and practice. So these are things that I constantly practice to make sure that I have consistency when I'm cutting hair. If you see the front, it has a slight over direction backwards. And that's all going to be dictated on how much length you want towards the front and also if they have a receding hairline. He didn't have one, but I did want a little bit more of that extension of length. So here I'm going to use Blade Slip, one of my favorite products to utilize. This is going to help me soften the hair as I shave. If you see it's white, but it'll go on clear onto the skin. So because it's a small detail, I'm not using my shaving cream. If I was shaving a larger area, I would have used my shaving cream here. But if you see how soft it is and how easy it is to shave. Also, one of my favorite things about this product is as I shave, there's not a lot of residue left behind. So it actually softens the hair. I make sure that I stretch out the skin. Whenever I'm shaving, I stretch out the skin and I lay my blade nice and flat against the, against the skin. Here I'm using grooming spray. This is also one of my favorite products to utilize when I want just a little bit of volume into the hair. As you see, I'm blow drying the hair. I always say it's all about that base. So you know that song, it's all about that base. That's exactly what I'm doing as I'm creating that volume. Right, movement is going to come from the base. So this is what I need to blow dry first. So if you see, I bring in my brush, my 413 brush, almost like in a rocking motion. And then I create lots of tension with that as I bring the teeth backward. So I start elevating that hair up and I focus more on the base, more on the base. The ends of it, I just bring them all back because I want something that's going to be not going to be that is not going to be extremely polished. So after I've combed the hair into place, I'm going to go in with a little bit of scissor over comb just to balance out, clean out any little bits of weight line. And I'm going to here use my dry paste. This is going to give me a little bit more of a flexible hold. The hair is going to have a very matte finish with that. But you see the nice texture that's created through that. Here you see an end result. You see how the weight balance is just a little bit longer towards the back, how it drops down a little bit through that fade, creating a little bit of proportion towards the top. And to finish it off, I'm going to use some of my skin tonic. This could be applied face anywhere on the skin. So it's going to be a little bit more of a refreshing feel that you feel with that. And here what I do is just give them a slightly different look. You know, I find that a lot of times for guys, versatility is key on them. So I like to show them more than one way to be able to brush and style the hair. And this is more of a textured look. Hope you guys enjoyed.